Okay, you have two weeks left to finish editing a video for a contest. Great, this happens. So many times that you start making this face while you edit. Or maybe you're just starting to play a game in HD. These things happen because your laptop doesn't have enough memory to perform operations, then store and compare all the answers. Now think about how difficult it would be for a computer to simulate traffic, biological processes, and chemical reactions. Where every part of the system is affecting each other at the same time. This is when quantum computers come in to help. Let's take two classical bits. Recall that a bit is the basic unit of information. A computer would take this information and perform an operation until they return the value we want. It's just like when we do trial and error in a math problem. But we all know that it's a slow process. A quantum computer, on the other hand, contains quantum bits or qubits. These are isolated particles in a state of superposition. A fancy way of saying that 15% of it thinks the answer is 40, 20% thinks it's 39, and so it goes. Sounds crazy, but here's a demonstration, the double slit experiment. We expect an electron to pass through only one of the slits, but because the electron thinks it's half particle and half wave, it passes through both at the same time. It interferes with itself as a wave and we see that in the pattern it produces. If the electron weren't half wave, there would be no pattern. If it weren't half particle, we wouldn't be able to see a pattern. Now when it comes to measuring the state, we don't really have an explanation as to how these quantum objects decide on taking a specific state. But as far as experimentation goes, all we know is that they're random. But we can still take advantage of that randomness. Instead of computing each possible value, we let quantum objects choose their own state to be in, while we observe bigger systems that run on this quantum randomness like the formation of tiny chemical bonds. So we understand how to make materials stronger. And it gets better. We can actually influence the behavior of quantum objects. Like a city with roads and barriers, a quantum circuit can be designed such that specific qubits interact with the ones we want them to. Okay, let's think of bits as cars. In an ideal world, if we know where each and every car plan to go, we could perfectly control traffic. But in reality, we wouldn't know unless we asked the person driving the car. Fortunately, a car under the law of superposition has its own way. It tells us where they might be at a certain time. When we have two cars and therefore two waves that come together, we can time their entrances so they avoid bumping into each other. We can design our streets to have cars interact in such a way that in the end, we can at least lessen traffic. Now let's talk about taking information from an actual qubit, the spin. The positive spin is more energetic than the negative spin. A positive spin qubit moves around more and we can detect them as current. But as we measure its state, we lose information. Like when you're asked what you want to eat, after choosing, it's like you never considered the other options. It's okay, this one part tells us a lot about the whole. I hope you now have an idea as to how quantum computers work. Thanks for watching and I'll be seeing you next time.